doing it everybody do i have a video for you and i'm excited for it we have the icon boats i guess lake drive lake test river because not a river it's a lake test and the walkthrough for you coming at you right now we're gonna go river test or lake test you can call it now back where i'm at it's a river we're lake testing now we're gonna go drive these things yeah. we are leaning on boat one correct yeah. we are leaning on boat one Who's ready? Here we go. Today we had two boats out there today. We had DV1, which is the first crack out of the mold. That boat was out there and we had Chuck's boat out there. Um, and Chuck's boat was extremely loaded, like loaded to the hilt. Three up front, 360, mega live, five batteries, two at the count. I mean, the thing is just, he guides with this boat um really good guide really good guy and guide but um his boat was loaded so it was good to see the experience or the the difference between a heavily loaded boat and db1 yeah so we just went with uh for a spin with brent and uh the one boat number one boat now we're in i think boat four or five whatever it is um it is literally a different deal let's just put it that way it's literally a different deal so um yeah it's great crazy on uh, what what it, what it is you're gonna kind of experience it right now Are you ready do it Okay, get ready for this. Yeah, Brent demonstrated this no hands over waves thing, um, and I had to try it. is an amazing feel in the boat when you're literally in the boat and you can let go of the steering wheel and you still feel in control. Does that make sense? Because it's literally how it feels. Like I can let go of that steering wheel and the boat doesn't feel like it's gonna spin out, doesn't feel like it's gonna lose itself. Um, complete, complete control. Like when I said when I was riding in the gambler of how it accepts water, this boat accepts, absorbs, and reacts Probably the best I've ever been in.
they pride themselves in safety with this hull. And we talked about, we talked to them with the engineers and we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to that in another video. But when we talked to them, they talked about safety. They talked about a high schooler getting in that boat, being able to jack that thing wide open, trim it up, and still feel safe and still feel like they're in complete control. When they designed the hull and they designed the boat, they weren't necessarily worried about top end speed. They weren't worried about going 85, 90 miles an hour. They were worried about control and the ability to allow every fisherman to feel that they're safe in the boat, both passenger and driver. It handles multiple weight really good, and that's, if you think back to kind of the way we were with the Gambler and how it accepted waves really good, this boat accepts waves tremendous, tremendous. Um, extremely safe to drive. Um, and when I say it's safe to drive, like, you just watch me take my hands up steering wheel going around a circle, hitting waves. Those weren't small waves, we hit, we hit our own wake immediately, you know. Um, turned it on a dime, kept it on plane, no blow up. There's a lot, I mean, this boat's loaded up. You look at the front of this boat, have they seen the front of this boat? This boat is loaded up. It's got a lot of weight up front. Uh, we got two 12s sitting in my face, and there's three 12s up front, it looks like. And plus we got a bunch of other garbage, 360 mega imaging, we got all sorts of stuff going on. Um, and it, uh, yeah, it's, uh, and the seat's comfortable. I mean, you really haven't experienced it yet because you've been filming, but it's pretty comfortable. Yeah. I mean, you can move that seat forward too. They're fully adjustable, the seats are forward and back, depending on who you want to be, it locks right in. Uh, the nice thing about this boat, and I'll talk about it a little bit more, is it looks kind of, I don't know, you probably haven't seen this yet, but the Icon Touch, the One Touch system is, uh, it's here and it's usable, but then it's also simplified over here, which, which is, which is really good, which is really, really good. Um, so, you know, there's just a lot, there's a lot going on. But it, it's clean. This boat's clean. It's neat. I mean, look at look at the console. Look at the lines. We're not hiding anything. I kind of not hiding anything. There's no seam here. This is all molded. Everything is molded. Um, they're not they're not hiding anything for anybody not to see. You know, I mean, look at everything that's built in this boat so far. It's pretty well well thought out. Well taken care of. How's the ride compared to a champion? The ride compared to a champion. This ride is better than a champion. Yes, I said it, and I stand behind it. This is the only boat to date that I've ridden in that handles and comfort better than a champion. So we're gonna do this time, get the boat on plane, get it up to wide open or close to it, and I'm just gonna get my foot, or I'm just gonna take the throttle and put it back. I'm just gonna put it back, and we're gonna watch the wash come over and see where the wash is on the boat, so you guys can see that too. So that's what we're gonna do now. Oh, I did. Took it off plane and set her back. That's what she did. I mean, if you think of that, guys, you think of the longevity of what you got, everything on that aspect of it. Um, yeah, it, that's going to go a long way, too. That's going to go a long way on your water inside the back of the boat. It's going to go a long way on your carpet quality. It's going to go a long way on just your... That, that water didn't even come close to going over that murk, did it? I don't think so. I, I didn't take, but when we were doing it, it didn't even come close to going over that mark. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, it's built. I mean, they thought of it. They thought of it. it I mean, you want to see massive. I'm just going to give you a quick peek inside of here just because this is what we're doing around here right now. That's massive. Massive. Massive live wells, um, fish care quality, all of it. So, yeah, so far, I can't complain. 
I don't know if we can uh, trundle the plate down a little bit. See if she'll get up on plane on a 180, should we? Dare me? Oh yeah, oh, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I think this was probably one of the biggest things that they talked about when we before we got to see the boat was the live well system. They completely talked about how to take care of fish and that that was a huge deal to them. It was a huge deal to them. And it's not about keeping taking care of the fish during that day when they're in the live well. It's about down the road. When you finally get to hear about it, and we bring Brent in on this because he knows a lot more about it, we're gonna let, we're gonna turn it over to him here in a second. But when you get to see the tour and you get to see everything and you get to see the thought and the process, the engineers and the people that they had behind this live well, it's not just like just fishermen did this. Wait till you get to hear about that. It's unbelievable. Within our live well system, our automated features, which is a uh, you know it, it has a lot within automation and uh, goes in within our, our pattern. So when laying it out, as far as uh, controls, you have one at the bow, um, the lower left corner. So if you catch a fish, you know, and, and purse fish, and you're pretty sure it's a keeper, you know, you can just hit the button with your foot, or if you land it midship of the boat, you know, you can hit the live wire right here, or you have the screen as well. Um, the boat will automatically be on auto, and uh, so it can basically do its, it do its thing. So I'd basically just hit the button, it's gonna fill up, on its own and uh we got a, a switch in it it'll sense it come all the way up and then it'll kick off and uh it'll automatically uh kick on a fish iv it'll add in whatever fish additive that you you put into it liquid forms and uh you know it'll put one ounce which is based off of 35 gallon live well and uh then you research kick on and you basically you don't you don't have to touch it you know, for the rest of the day uh you got our you know our upgraded system within uh, our chiller plate if you're in uh you know summertime uh or even in florida you know like this time of year as well you can set the the live well uh temp on it for the chiller you know so if we're in you know 80 80 degree water 86 degree water you know you can basically customize it what you want set it to 60 and it'll automatically sense that when the water goes in hits the sensor and it'll start you know cooling the water yep also we have uh, which we can explain on the trailer we have a run dry protection you got kids or yep. whatever else you know and, and somebody they're, they're messing around with it leave the pump on it'll run dry for you know average 15 to 17 seconds then it'll it'll kick it off so you don't burn a pump up you know dry run but um uh, yeah, you could you could also for those guys that you know that, that like to do things manually um you get you could swap it at any time and hit manual mode and control whatever whatever pumps you want just si simple as that it'll shut off i can turn on you know whatever whatever i want and you can see where uh, the research are on the timer because uh that this boat's programmed for a timer you, you can take the timer off if, you, if, if you're the guy that wants you know constant research uh, 
basically however you want to customize it yeah. it's, it's pretty simple you, you can you can do whatever you want to do so um, i'm gonna swap back to auto mode so then that way you can see the full full feature of it so let's talk about the touchpad. I deal with them all the time, guys. You know I do. Everybody does in bass boats. Rangers got theirs. Camus has got theirs. Nitro's got theirs. Everybody's got their new one. There's a difference here. It was designed, the software was designed there. Um, they did all of that. And it is literally like you're using an iPad. It makes me feel like I'm scrolling through an iPad. Um, and it's like you're at the highest Wi-Fi point where there's zero lag. There's no lag. You scroll, touch, bing. It's boom, 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 boom. It's quick. It's responsive, it's functional, and that's the deal. It's not a giant screen, it's really nice sized, and it's easy to use. And, and you guys that are kind of scared of that stuff, and there's guys out there that hate that, that hate that, they just don't like it. And we know there's problems with that stuff, right? We deal with it all the time, I deal with it here. I mean, you're seeing pictures of us doing that stuff all the time. Getting rid of them BCMs, getting rid of all that stuff. BCM is boat control module. Getting rid of those things and getting rid of the one, two, three, four, touch, go, the old style stuff. This new stuff is gonna be different. Now, let's say we got a problem here with that one. They thought about it. The switches on the other side, you can power your stuff up. And we talk about that a little bit, but you can literally, if this takes a poo-poo, we can go over here and take care of that. So it, it, they thought about it. They put thought into, what happens if this fails? We gotta have a backup. I'll shut these lids. Also, if you look, we got the custom paw right here, so it don't beat the fish to death either. So it's pretty, pretty robust. All right, so with our pump out, if a uh, guy's fishing, you know, a tournament, he pulls up to the dock, and uh, I, I think we should let, let's just talk about you know because the live well so full, like you and I were talking about, mm -hmm. you can literally pump it out and recirc new water in yes absolutely. You, you can take the top off of your live well mm -hmm. and get some new fresh water in so especially up where i'm at you get that muck milky water that mucky water and them smallmouth don't like that or whatever you want to get them smallmouth in some cleaner water you get back on the main channel you yep. can just recirc the whole system if you wanted to you could pump out that bad yes. water yes and then you can still fish you can still yeah. keep fishing absolutely right so absolutely. We, we can pump water out and be pumping new water in at yes. the same time yes and that is yes. something that i don't think i don't know that anybody else does because most people are running them pole nabs or whatever or they're running mm -hmm. valve systems right where you're just we can directly pump all that water out and pump the fresh water in yes yeah it's it's a simple fact of uh within uh if you zoom in on the screen right here i'll show you you'd basically just hit your settings button and we're working in auto mode scroll down right here pump out disabled all right so if you watch and we'll hit the pump out now see when it's disabled it kicks those pumps off right so i'll go right back to my settings and this is whatever you know anybody wants to do so we'll turn it back off hold on a second let me go back in the to manual and then I'm gonna hit pump out. Now, fa factory setting will be, the pump out will be disabled, but it's a simple fact of three touches. You, you can do whatever you want to, you know, for like you, you, know, yeah. you guys up north in whatever region, right. you wanna do that. Right, yeah, you wanna pump out that mucky water, that yeah, absolutely. water, and still you're not, physically losing volume essentially you may yes. lose some volume or you could pump the volume down and immediately pump back in yes and being that they're such a big live well and such a deep live well those fish aren't going to get stressed they're not going to get beat up they're not going to get anything you could go yeah. from fishing the backwaters up where we're at where it's shallow mm -hmm. mucky and then you get out in the river catch some smallmouth or something like that and you got that dingy water like i was telling you when we were in the yeah. in the warehouse you know we pump mud in and we pump everything else in to the point of where You'll open up that live well and it'll it'll be muddy water and you mm -hmm. get them smallmouth in there and they just don't react to it good sometimes. That's why I think this that's the biggest thing that when I was thinking about the live well and fish ability and fish quality and keeping fish alive, being able to take that top scum off and get rid of that garbage water mm -hmm. and put that fresh water back in, it's, I think mm -hmm. that's going to be huge. Yeah, for sure. Also, I mean, you can see we used, uh, you know, as far as our bait well system on, our, on the big boats, you know, I mean, yeah. we're not... You know, definitely known for keeping the bait fish alive going offshore. You know, in salt in, in the saltwater world, but we have no blunt corners, right? And uh, we also used it within within our, our fitting, so you got a circular motion, just like a, a bait tank. You know, okay. so you yep. don't have a stagnant corner. You know, on conventional, I say conventional, but 
traditional live wells, we all know it, you know, it's within square corners, and wherever your research is, a lot of the fish want to congregate right mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. right in front of it. Mm -hmm. So we found that working with uh, Latona, which is a biologist, and he's known for raising and hauling trophy fish all over the U.S. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a... Uh, keeping them alive. Yeah, absolutely, keeping them alive. You know, he's a big part of our patent, so we worked strategically with him as well on this whole design, mm -hmm. you know, uh, as far as that goes. We also base the size off of, uh, you know, five to nine pound fish, you know, it's like I say, if, it, if a guy's in a draw tournament, mm -hmm. you know, can I, can a guy fit 25 pounds of, you know, bass in this side and 25 pounds of bass in that side. You know, it's like a, where you guys are from, you know, smallmouth, they kick. I mean, it's like, you know, 20 to 28 pounds. Yep. You know, it's not uncommon at all. Yep. And especially on the Tennessee River chain or then as you go down, you know, into Texas and Florida and stuff like that. So we, we tried to find a happy medium balance, right. you know, that would work, you know, anywhere, you know, wherever anybody's fishing at. So, uh, but that's, that's how we based it off of within size and shape and, there's a lot that goes into it as well, you know, and the insulated live well, I mean, we got two inches of insulation on this side, you know, to be able to maintain that temperature, uh, you know, in the summer months, and, uh, you know, once you get the water cool, you, need, you want to try to keep it there, mm -hmm. you know, which which is a big thing, you know, which also goes along with our, our temp sensor as well. Yeah, people, the temp sensor in a lot, yeah. finally. Yeah, we have it here. You can also go back, say, within the engine page, <clears throat> and I can customize it to either you know, to either side. If I want live well temp, I can put it here. Um, you know, even in our uh, fish mode page, I mean, it, it tells you live well temp, you know, trolling battery, cranking battery, your fuel. There's all kinds of little customizing, but it's not overboard that somebody shouldn't be able to operate, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. even simple. Uh, so, same thing, you know, we wanted to put in uh, right here where we got protected resource, how it integrate them, because that's basically, you know, the biggest thing behind it, you know, yeah. it's keeping the fish alive. Uh, so the next generation, you know, can catch right. them, you know, and pass it on. I think when it came to like you and Jacob, that was a huge thing. Oh, uh, absolutely. The live well was a huge part of this boat. Yes. Huge one, part of it. Yes, 100%. You know, there's no doubt about it. Uh, you know, how to make things better. And it's yeah. just, I mean, you can tell the product will speak for itself. All right, we're going to be off the water here and we're going to go through a quick walkthrough in the boat. Here's the difference, guys. I know there's a bunch of people out there doing walkthroughs. There's a bunch of fishermen. Um, I don't know how many tech guys or service guys really go through these boats. I don't really know that. That was the whole deal why they called me in. Okay, that's why they wanted they wanted to know from the service aspect. But the deal is, I fish. I fish for years. I fish tournament trails for years. I fish competitively for years. So not only are they getting just the fishermen, because I look at it from a fisherman standpoint for you guys also, but also from a service guy. All right, the service side of things. How easy is it for me to work on things? How difficult is it? Am I going to get my hand full of? fiberglass blisters and splinters and am I going to be pissed off at the end of the day because the engineers effed this up or did that or am I going to just sit in the boat and be able to be functional on the service side of things back from the pumps to getting access to the gas sending unit the gas tank to the live wells to the you know the harnesses and being accessibility through the boat when I say through the boat like panels do they come off easily do I got to take all three graphs off to get to something to get it out to get to where I need to go at the dash do I have to disassemble the whole front half of the dash drop it down have a cluster of wires to weed through those are the things that was important to me when I got there you're gonna get all of that in this part of the video how are we doing guys I have just finished up with the icon ride to test everything and I'm just gonna go through the boat with you um, I'm gonna tell you right now when it comes to the runability, when it comes to the quality, when it comes to the drivability, it is a 10. It is a 10 with the ride, it is a 10 with the drivability. I'm just going to go through the boat for you quick, and we're just going to get an overview of kind of what it is. All right, starting right back here, starting back here in this, basically your, your main compartment is what I call it when it comes to service. You have all your pumps, you have all your batteries. If you look here, you can see how finished this boat is. This boat is literally finished off to be clean all the time. Batteries, easy accessible. Pumps are easy accessible. Your pumps down there are easy accessible. These actually come off, these little come off. You can pop this, slide these, kind of like what you do to your transom saver, slide that together. You only gotta do one side. This whole little come right off for you. All right, then we're gonna rotate ourselves right up into here. Uh, we, we did, we did, we kind of on the water, did a little bit of the live wells and you can see just how massive they are. If I put my arm in here, you can see how far deep, how deep they really go. Um, really good latches themselves, high quality latches, stainless. We get back into the back compartments behind here you can see we got a life jacket in here um, these come out very similar to other brands but then you get to see 
you get right in, you can see the finishing. I mean, you can see the finished quality of the boat. Turn here, we get up to the cockpit area, we get to the console, we get to the uh, passenger side. The seat itself is on a slide, but you can see how rigid that is. You see how rigid that is? Other brands are not that way. All right, so we're sitting in here, like we said before, easy adjustment, easy slide, locked back into place. Their one touch system is a one touch system. Um, we're gonna have Brett take, talk you through that a little bit more, but you can see how clean it is. You can see how clean it is. And when I, one of the things I talk about when we're dealing with new boat companies or we're dealing with boat companies in general, we talk about council, right? This council still works. A lot of councils don't work. The wind kills you, all this stuff. These are 212 sitting here. And I can clearly see over this. I can see very well in front of me. I can see everything for safety purposes. And the seat itself, guys, I'm not as young as I used to be, right? But I can get out of this thing, no problem. In and out, no problem. You can lay, you can sit, I mean, you can get in and out of this thing real easy. As a co-angler, you're sitting over here, to have the adjustment, and to be able to get out. It is not too low, it's not too high. It's like perfect level I can get up. This right here, I don't know if you can see this, Jordan, the center step of this boat. This is literally the cooler. That's a huge cooler. Um, the deal is how big it is. I got size 12, size 13 feet. You can see how big that is. It is not a big step, okay? Super simple. Get to the front deck, massive, massive front deck. Um, we talked about it before on the original video on how wide and how big this thing is. I'm six foot three, so I can lay here like this no problem i can probably come and see it. kind of give you an idea of the mass of this deck and it's full padded too this deck is full padded not just where you stand it's full padded um we get to the rod lockers this is a prime example here it's 312s this thing is loaded loaded to the hill right and look how clean that boat looks the easeability how it looks it doesn't look out of control and then we talked about it back at, at the factory a little bit how rigid this is i mean this is a lot of weight here guys i'm pushing on that and it's not flopping around it's not bouncing all over the place credit to icon for thinking of those kinds of things okay when we talked to tc about it we talked to him about where they screw where they anchor all this boat is completely reinforced here we got this is something you want to see right here oh, you can get in here jordan let's see as a service guy, we talk about all sorts of things. Right? Talk about can we get to things? Uh, can you see that? Can you get in there? I can hold it too. I mean, you can see, you can see, you can get to everything right here, right? We can get to everything. There's your fire extinguisher. Set this back in here. Close this down. Look at this right here, guys. We open this. Look at the rigid here. Look at this. That's not going anywhere. Okay, it's not going to break. And here, we want to work on our console. You can work on your console. It's all right there. Clean power. Clean power for electronics. Here, clean power all the way up there. You can take that panel off up there, and you can get to everything on both ends of it. So you can literally get to things. All right. They thought of it. Not many boat companies do, but they thought of us as service people. Now, this is massive. Hold up, hold up. We just got a call just before we dropped this video. We had to cut this video again, recut it. We could not show the center rod or the center storage in the hull. Right up front on the deck, we can't show that. There's something special inside there. We can't show you what's going on there. I can't wait for you to see it. I'm just gonna say one thing about it, okay? It is physically the biggest center section of a boat I've ever seen when it comes to storage. It's huge, and that's all I'm gonna say. No, not gonna happen. Rod box, rod boxes. Massive, I'll take it. It's big. So rod boxes in here, lots of rods. Now this boat is so new, it does not have the inlays in it. So there's gonna be padding here, here, and here, all the way around for padding. There's pads that are gonna be in this boat, but this boat is so new that we didn't even get time to get them in there. This is just basically so you can see what it looks like inside of here.
I mean, that's it. That's really it. I mean, I don't think we need to talk anything more. But you want to look inside? Same style, same stuff. I mean, tons of room. Literally tons of room. And I don't know if we can see. That goes all the way up in there. You can see for rigging. If you want to rig, you know, you can rig right alongside there. You can get in here. I can get my hand up in here. Right here. I don't know if you can see. But that right there. That, I can get my hand. I'm touching the wiring harness for the boat. Service, guys. I can get my hand up in there for service purposes. Um, so, at the end of the day, the Icon trip was probably a little bit more than I expected. I expected, and I'm a hard guy to humble when it comes in boats. It comes two boats. I've seen them all. I've touched them all. I've driven almost every brand. Um, and I always take my back, my my thought process back to the late 90s, the early 2000s. Those boats were built better, I think, than some boats that are built today. And it was all about pride. It was about commitment. It was about success in the company and people caring about their product. And uh, that's what I felt like when we went here. I felt like I was back old school because when we started this journey on this whole thing, we started it in a different plant from where we ended. And we got to see the success of what they do. I mean, these people build $5 million yachts, but yet they choose to go build this quality, this style boat. Um, and they're going to have ups and downs just like anybody, just because they're new to it. But they're building boats that go out on the ocean. They're building things that are the highest bit of quality that people buy, that entertainers buy, that sports people buy, that professional athletes buy and they're gonna build bass boats now. So all I can say is I think a new bar has been set um, where they lack, where this boat, only thing this boat lacks out of everything that goes on with it is speed and they're gonna get some grief about it a little bit. But the fact of the matter is, is the boat will do 70 miles an hour um, and we were loaded when we did 70. Uh, it'll do 68, 69, 70 miles an hour, but where they lack, what they lack in speed you recover it in the ride okay there's not many boats that on takeoff if your boat 30 that you're gonna be 10 because you're getting out of the gas okay because you're in and out of the throttle you're in and out of the trim you legitimately could be boat 10 because you don't got to get in and out of the gas you can hammer down leave it trimmed up and just go rideability 10 drivability 10 um, quality Quality at this point, I'm going to put them at a, a nine, and the only reason I'm doing that is because I can see some little flaws when it comes to just some small things like lines and stuff like that. But you get it out of everything. To get a ten, it has to be a perfect, like a perfect. Everything has to be perfect. A nine is super high. Um, their convenience of what they did here with the one-touch system, with the live wells, with everything they did, the dash. This is one of the most comfortable dashes I've ever sat behind when it comes to drivability, ease here, the manual side here. You know the computer side here the best of both worlds the phone charger this boat doesn't have it in it yet but the phone charger um and just the cleanliness the cleanliness and the organization of the boat the stereo system they hit it on the head they hit it on the head with a lot of things um i'm going to give this boat if we're doing our one to ten scale like we do i'm going to give this boat a 9.8 9.8 on success and i think icon is only going to be better and bigger as the years go here I think if we return to Icon 12 months from now, it's going to be something that you've never seen because they are going to test the waters on everything and they're going to always try to be the leading edge. Um, I think it's great for the industry. Icon in general is just going to be great for the industry because we need somebody to set the bar. We need somebody to continue to push so the consumer themselves, whether you're a Ranger or a Nitro, whether you're a Triton guy, whether you're a at Stratos, I don't give a damn what you are, whether it doesn't matter, this is good for the industry. Because I said it like five, four years ago, whenever we started this, that this is what boats are gonna come to more car-like. It's coming, we just, that's the way it is. We just have to change with it. Some people are cool with it, some people hate it. But the fact of the matter is, is, this is good for the industry. This is good for people that are always stuck on one brand. It gives you an option to go look at something else and say, why doesn't my boat have that? Or why doesn't my boat do that? Or how come that does that and mine doesn't? We need standards in this industry and we always gotta be keeping these companies held to those standards. Whether they're big corporation 
or individuals, it doesn't matter. Whoever's building boats or where we're spending our hard consumer money on, it has to be quality. This boat is quality. This boat is quality. And I'm not saying that because they invited me down here. You know as well as I do, if I thought it was a piece of shit, I'd be telling you right now it's a piece of shit and we'd be on a plane tomorrow getting out of here. It's not, guys. It's not. It's solid. It's rigid. I talk about this council. This council is one molded piece. You look at this. There's no lines. There's no plastic. There's nothing hiding anything anywhere. There's nothing hiding anything anywhere. We're not hiding a crack. We're not hiding a uh, an imperity. We're not hiding anything of that. We're showing it off. And that's what I. That's the biggest thing I took away from Icon when I've been here. Is they're not scared. They're not scared to show you what they have. They're not scared to do what they do. I mean, you can look over this boat right here. If you can see that coming in right there. That's what else they build. And this isn't scripted. That's just not showing up just because we're doing this. This just happens to be coming in. That is three, three six hundreds on it. Three six hundreds on it, Mercs. That's what they build. Now they're building this. That's what I'm saying. It's what we need in this industry. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the Icon video. I enjoyed being here in Tennessee for more than one reason. It's very nice here today. It's not minus 32. We were able to get out of the weather for a little bit. We were around great people. Um, the Icon family is gonna be bigger. Um, and it truly is a family. It truly is. They made us feel at home. Um, it's, just been, it's just been a great experience. I hope everybody goes and checks them out. They're gonna be at the Classic. Make sure you get to the Classic if you're, if you're around this area of Tennessee. Make sure you get to the classic, witness the icon experience, go check it out. Stay tuned for our full factory tour coming up on a video down the road here. We're not going to just keep hammering you with icon stuff, but we're going to get that video out to you soon. Um, also, 24th, 25th, 26th, go get yourself a hands-on, touch, feel, smell, lay, talk to the guys at the classic in Tennessee, right in Knoxville. Get there, get yourself a first class front row ticket to this boat. It's gonna be there. You'll be able to talk to the guys about it. I'm sure all the crew that we talked to is gonna be there. You'll be able to ask them all the questions you need to. Um, I think we're done with this, right, Jordan? This is it, this is all we got. So I guess in closing, we're just gonna talk here a little bit. I know we talked about this before and I, and, I, and I continue to stress it, guys. I continue to push it. We're not able to go do this without you. Okay. The reason why we got the phone call to go to Icon is because of you. All right. And that's my whole goal with this community that we're building. We're, we're building a team marine service community that's going to be bigger than anything. And we're going to be able to hold companies accountable, right? Because it, it's not just me. I don't need to do this, right? I don't need to do this, but I've got you behind me. I've got my team marine army behind me that wants to know, that has the questions. So when places like Icon call and say, hey, we want you to come look at this boat, they're not just calling me. They want you guys to see it. They want you guys to understand what I see. So that way, if you got questions, you can get through me and we get to them. And that's what we're doing here, guys. We're building a community that's going to be bigger than anything. It's going to be bigger than what the marine industry has ever seen before. So that's what's huge. It's not just me. It's us. It's we. We're together pounding this thing down and we're going to make it so we hold people accountable in this industry. Greatest, greatest thing. I never thought it'd be this big. Trust me. When I called Jordan four years ago or whatever it was and said, let's go do this. I never imagined that we're at 20 K, which doesn't even represent what we do. The 20 K really doesn't represent what we do because our numbers are through the roof outside of just the 20 K subscribers. You, you 20 K that have subscribed, if you could get 20K more, that'd be awesome. But I don't need 20K more because we have so much interaction with you guys and you guys are so much pounding down the doors and talking and chatting. And you guys, and the coolest part, I've told you this before, is that we are able to have this guy that hates this deal and this guy that loves this deal and you guys mediate. You literally talk about it and you bring new things up and you don't even know you're doing it. And then this guy says something about this and this. And by the time we're done, there's... 18, 20, 40, 100 of you guys talking about one thing. It is unbelievable. This industry has never had that. It's never had, I hate this, I hate this, or I run this, I run this, I'm never gonna run that, but you guys are meeting in the middle and talking about things and making it known to the world about certain things. And when I say world, guys, you are global. When you are chatting and you are talking, you are global. There's people all around the world hearing you. They're not just hearing me, they're hearing you. And that's the coolest part about this. I see more Team Marine logo around. I mean, I can't believe the amount of merch you guys are buying. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. 
And when I go places and people want to get pictures taken, I didn't expect that. I didn't expect to even be at the Icon plant and have one or two people come up to me and ask, just ask for a picture because their kids, their kids watch what we do. Not just them, their kids. That's amazing to me. That's amazing to me that I'm being seen by kids, even 12 year olds, 10 year olds that are interested in fishing, high school, college, that are interested in fishing and boating in general. I couldn't believe it. And then all the way up to people that are driving around in their pontoons. Guys in California, gals in California, South Africa, Europe, I don't, we're everywhere guys. It's amazing and that's because of you. And I can't say it enough, I cannot say it enough, I, I can continue to preach all night, all day, but you did that. We didn't do that, you did that because you made us who we are. I take my hat off to you, but you get to see a bald spot and I don't want you to see that. So, I appreciate you, I can't thank you enough. Once again, get over, check the merch out. We've got the Smoke Series going right now. Get over there, that's gonna be stopping here probably soon. So if you didn't get that, get over there, get yourself some of that. Always keep checking, because there's gonna be something new there regularly. There's gonna be a whole new series coming. We don't know what it is yet. We have some options, we just gotta pick. Um, like I said, hold these companies accountable. Make these companies calling us out. And I say us, all of us. If I go, you go. And that's the cool part. And I'm going for you, I'm not going for me. I got enough work to do here. I'm going for you guys, because you guys deserve it. As always, Comment, subscribe, click the notification bell to witness the madness. And I hope everybody, how about at the Bassmaster Classic? That's gonna be cool. I wish I could be there, but I got basketball. I have a commitment to my son and a team. So, I hope they all, I, if you are there, I mean, I'm just gonna stop this, Jordan. If you are there and you see a Team Marine shirt, hat, anything like that, snap a picture of it, send it to us. Can they do that? Can they drop it on Facebook? Can they send it to us, email it to us, what? Yep, they I, can, I want to. However they want to do it, add us on Instagram. Yeah, add us on Instagram. I don't know how to do any of that shit, so I don't do that. So Jordan's just filling me in right now. But if you know how to do it, send us the pictures of what you see. We want to see the Team Marine gear. I don't care where you're at. I don't care where you're at. Just send me pictures of your gear, all right? Just start sending me pictures of your gear. You with your gear on, like I said, your friends, your girlfriends, you don't even know who it is, snap a picture of them. I want to see the gear, the stickers. I just want to see the gear because that's what makes me smile every day, knowing that my gear is is active in Illinois and Madison, or Minnesota and Florida and Georgia and Kentucky and Texas and Tennessee and everywhere. That's what I want to see. That's cool. That's it. That's all I got to say. As always, comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell to witness the madness that I hope everybody at the Classic is going to say. Speed, money, no brakes. Team Marine Service and you guys, we're out. See ya!